Okay, folks, basically cruising around at all the webcams around over in Hawaii. Pay attention to the elevation, 13,700 feet, folks. And they also, in Hawaii, you can get a shot of 50 feet of elevation. We're going to show you that to you here in a second. Uh, let's go along here, and where do we get 50 feet down on? These are all recent shots, folks. These are all new. And as the sun does its magic, suns, okay, because basically we're going to take you and show you we're going to get to a let me scan the left real fast okay there's diamond head so forth and so on the most recent and we are going to be able to show you as we find you see a dramatic stun action super giants in the sun okay that's down at 11,000 2,000 feet is a big you know, that's almost like a mile. I mean, it's a little bit less than a mile, and we know that. I mean, a mile, if I remember right, is like 20, 390 feet or something like that. 2,800, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I don't have my uglies with me right now. So there's a shot of the sun at 13,650 feet hitting the volcano, as you can see, or suns, as you see way more than one ray. So it's also dramatic over here at 2,700 feet, as you see how the light is affecting over in Hawaii. And once people get used to it, and there's down at 50 feet, okay? So suns, because you can see the rings around that the idea that how the suns that we know are stacked in the supergiants and our sun. And as you can see by the big wide pans and the connections here on these, that you can see the rays. And no matter, even if it's just the what they always presume and assume, that yes, we know that it has magnetic shields and so forth, and it's bright because it's sun and it's brightness. And maybe that's just the sun in its all of its rings. But the, as you can see, it that elevation of 13,650 feet, and it hits right on the volcano, i.e. that's why over the history of millions and probably billions of years that that volcano has been there. And also the one that we have in... That's getting our the dramatic truth of it all over in, in Japan right now, being helped out to be more intense by the CPM and the RADs that are in the air for the the, ra the radionuclei. They're getting uh, exacerbated by the sun's rays and the supergiants and all the stars' rays. And I want to thank uh, the cameras up there. Basically, these are NASA cameras. And you can see the uh, CME and electrical energy from the stars and the supergiants as you see the flopping action on this one camera. It basically is set the light and aperture is just right so that it picks it up all the time. As you see it, all that in the air, folks, is there. Actual light from everything in space. And it is above the volcanoes and these triangulations and these floppings are going on as you can you can't miss it folks in the air in the sky I'm pointing over here and you can see some of it here too but to the left here I'm not even in interrupting it folks and you can see it like crazy okay and they are letting scientists around the world see this because basically they're basically when you go to the deal you normally just go okay and pick out a footage they're wanting to let people know what's going on from all different angles of what this energy is doing out there, okay? Because that asteroid belt is still there, right above the drome. It's tons of millions, and probably maybe even billions, of, or maybe who knows how close this is. Is this the one that's around by the space station that we showed you that they could see the footage of? Okay, so let's go down and we'll pick out a footage of one of these days, and basically show you up here that these these cameras to sit still, and you get an idea of what that asteroid belt in Oort cloud looks like okay right there and then nothing really because but you'll see the movement you can see it in this footage there you can see that energy moving around in the sky okay suns stars and triangulation way the hell out in space but it hits earth folks okay in the east and what I showed you before in the west us seeing the super giants light okay now this can possibly be also be coming up from the west, but the idea this is east, so it could just be the sun is in the supergiant. So there you go, you got the sun coming up now. Vehicle either drops or picks somebody up, or somebody was working late and they're sharing the vehicle or something like that, whatever. So watch the footage here as, as the time goes off in the AM. Now, you've got the asteroid belt here, is what I can show you. That basically this footage 
has the darkness from because I can get it froze just in the right neck of time that the idea there is darkness okay the sun's coming up in the east but you have the darkness and I can even maybe move it back just a little bit more and you will see there you go there is the asteroid belt the planets the whatever in the west okay going down and as you see there you could blow that picture up and you can see a gigantic one two three and doesn't matter asteroid belt so there is some massive stuff out there even if it's just these as you can see boom 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 you see those little black dots in there okay right in here you see those little black dots in pretty much in an arc there formation well that's a nebula out there it's an asteroid belt nebula whatever you want to call it uh, universe, a galaxy or something out in space and it is close to us on Earth because basically it's given us a black shadow. And it's in the, our sky in the daytime as you watch this. is all going to be here and it'll take different looks and so forth as the day goes by. And remember, it's thir you can only see it at 13,000 some odd square feet now. I mean, uh, height, okay? But now let's just let it play and you'll see it. It's not going to go away. Now the sun's coming up and it's there and then you get, like we've seen, the colorization and it also just stays there, as you see it to the left and above the dome. So, for years and years and years, it's something that basically that that telescope was more than likely somewhat viewing when whenever it was way farther out in space than it is now. And as you can see in all the footage, that it's there. I mean, it's just and now there he goes. There's some super giant action right there. Hang on, let's get where what where did I have it on time now? As you see the Oort cloud, or whatever you want to call it, a nebula out there in space. And as you see this, the telescope moving around. Now, it's got its door open. But what you're going to see is some light to the right, I believe. Well, that could be inside the telescope. So then you basically just have to watch the footage to see whether that's from inside the telescope or is it from out in space. So you got to basically center that video. Then I'll just put my marker on it, and we'll see, because basically, let's keep an eye on the door. There's the door open there. Now, it could move around in the dark, and basically, that probably is. So, that's probably from inside the telescope. So, if you remember my old videos, the idea that we proved that the idea that it wasn't the telescope when we seen light before down here in the west... So, and as we have known that the idea that that object over in Hawaii has moved farther, it was, we figured, to the north and to the east, okay, so you don't end up seeing it anymore. So it was a very rare point in time and all that footage that we captured before of catching super giant light down over here, and it wasn't vehicles, okay? Now, I know there's been vehicles and dirt, and, but not that footage that I showed, and everybody that seen the videos pretty much knows that, okay? Uh, so you basically have Oort cloud over here and also here. And no, folks, it's not steam off the volcano, okay? It's not. So you see the Oort cloud, and it does its action all day long. doesn't move. It's always there 24-7. It's in the sky, okay? And there's different little angles there as the scope was turning around. You will see that that Oort cloud is there. And more than likely, it has rise and set periods. And as you see, uh, an object out of it even made the top of the dome glisten. Okay, a uh, combination of the sun also, possibly. But as you've seen that one object that was up there, there was like a planet or something up there. Maybe even a reflection. And as you can see, even as the sun's going down, then the brightness shows up in that Oort cloud right there. Where you see my pointers at. So. And that's not the dome. It's because we'll hit play on that again, and then you'll see, and then you can see that you can see triangulation happening right there on the dome. I mean, it's very easy to see that the idea that there is flopping around of something way faster than the sun. The sun doesn't rotate that fast, and as you see right there on top of the dome, and then you see that object rising there too. So it'd be interesting to find out what object is rising at that time, but it doesn't matter. That is staying steady right there, and you watch it, and you'll see it move. See that triangulation? It's like that there's a, and no, folks, the uh, telescope does not have a uh, flipping, uh, doesn't have a light on it, okay? I mean, it's got light inside, yeah, but on, on this, during the daytime out there, there's not no 
light that says, okay, we're moving around, or that's actual flipping around from light objects in space, and you can see it. So Oort Cloud, Nebula, or Asteroid Belt, watch right here for the disco action, because you're going to see it. You can't miss it. You see that flashing up there? And then that other object rising back there? And then the sun goes down. So I did some calculations, folks, to save some paper, saved a tree. And there's your time, the central standard time, the date today. And guess what's close by us on Earth? And it is 429 square kilometers. Okay? Squared, actually. Okay? So guess what that is? That's what's close by today that a lot of people didn't tell you about. And yes, this is right from NASA's information because it's not an asteroid or a comet. Let me go to 2012. And there you go. I even got it highlighted because I did the... Basically, that is straight up is meters, folks. Okay, and that ends up being kilometers if you do your math. And that is 433 Eris. And I've, I know we've heard of that before. I've heard of that before. So then we go to the JPL on it and so forth and so on. And we got the close by uh, on the 12th, 2012, on the 31st. And I never apologize for misquoting because I'm just basically looking at info and just kind of rattling it off so that you know what I'm looking at when we're looking at data. So, and then we'll pull up the telemetry on this bugger. And at the same time, when we go to this telemetry in a second on the orbiter, and basically have all this stuff that's close today. Okay? So, also, all guard, maybe if I get another time for a video, it'll we'll be probably the next info that we'll look at on that. Uh, basically, did some, uh, I did some Nehemiah station for you in the video before that should be uploaded right now. And then we'll go to JPL here, and, and, and we got uh, our date today, and that all you off. So, uh, give you basically, I guess, a duh, we're just basically going to give you the view of, of it in Earth and so forth. And as you see, it's close to us, uh, quite large. It's not small. And basically, that's one of the ones that we've heard of before, and I think we might even had some stuff in some of our, a. Uh, and I'll hit play, basically. I'll back it up, I guess, a little bit so you get a little separation so you can see Earth there on the diagram and so forth and so on. There you got you got Earth, and you got Eros, and then we'll just click ahead real fast. And you can watch the dates to get to the first, because basically that's the closest it's going to get to us. was supposed to be on the first. And is the data end up being on the first? It's 178 on the first. And it was basically 170 based yesterday, I guess. And on an all other day. So the calculation is pretty damn good. And so hopefully tomorrow on this should be updated, you'd figure. So then moving away. Tomorrow. And do we get anything close on a getaway or a go away? And is anything coming? You know, it should just stay up. It's going away. So there you see your layers and so forth and so on. And so that's objects close to us. And then all these objects there are close to us. And like I say, we're rabbit hiding out in a hole. And it's the idea of the debris of everything that moves around in space that's pretty close is when our 365 plus days around point whatever around the sun is what's interesting is what could we end up getting a fly on our windscreen. So Keck discoveries and basically that's the NASA name for their studies and that I was showing you that stuff on the mass dwarf stars and everything like that. So basically out series is out between Mars and the size of Jupiter and so forth and pretty much this is how in the Big Bang everything kind of lines up. Okay. Whenever there was a major Big Bang, if the, if all this that you're seeing in here in your spectrum is coming through that this is all the stuff that's out there. So what we are interested is when we're coming around Uranus, Neptune and stuff like that we know that we've discovered 2003 UV313 in Earth's orbit. What is out there on our road? Because we stay on our highway grid, okay, in Earth, going around or a rotation of the sun, okay? So what's interesting is what are they not telling us that's out there in front of us? That would be a windshield full of bugs for Earth. And then once again, we have condition 5. And I think I first looked this up, it was 7. And this thing is hella fast. And it's one of our objects today coming by at that fast, folks. That's hella fast, okay? It's like just under 30 miles an hour. I mean, 30 miles per second, okay? 30 miles per second. It's like 28 or something point something. Or even if I'm wrong, it's 26 at the lowest, 26 point something 
per second, per second, per damn second, not mile per hour. Some more data soon.